Hey Fuerte friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Trisha Fuerte and this is Fuerte Body and this is our 18th Fuerte Body break. If you don't know what Fuerte Body breaks are, as you can see in the title, they are daily mental health check-ins, a moment for me to check in with my body, remind you to check in with your body. They are unedited, unfiltered, raw files, raw feelings, straight from the heart, straight to the phone, straight to YouTube. Even if my voice shakes, even if I'm afraid, even if it's not perfect. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let's physically check in now. Um, do you have your water? Go get some water if you don't have some near you. If you do, cheers. We're drinking water. Did you drink your water? Did you drink it? Don't forget to wash your water bottles frequently. Drink your water. Uh, stay hydrated. How am I feeling physically? I feel refreshed. I just took a shower. I also ate dinner. So, yay. Um, but I must admit, I do feel a little nervous there we talked about uh confrontations that need to happen in therapy today uh and i feel like they're per personal and professional confrontations and both are you know need to happen asap and confrontation as a millennial is never fun <laughs> but super super necessary I'm so grateful for my therapist, really had a moment that reeled me in and allowed some feelings that um, I've been holding in that needed to pass, uh, pass through. Um, so I do have, I do have clarity. Um, and then another reflection um, from therapy today and after therapy before uh, that I wanted to share with y'all um, is for anybody else who is the mediator in their family. I am the mediator in my family. I'm a middle child. Um, <laughs> shout out to my middle, middle kids out there. Um, I know there are mediators who are not middle children, but that such is, I'm literally, what is it? It's not Erickson's stages of development. Whoever said, whoever talked about birth order, um, apologies to my psych professors and my human behavior professors in social, in social work school, uh, but birth order. I'm a middle child and I do have those um, experiences being the mediator in my family. And I wanted to share with y'all how I take care of myself. Uh, so maybe uh, if you're a mediator in your family and you want to try these ways of taking care of yourself, or if you know a me the mediator in your family is try needs to try new ways to take care of themselves, you could send this to them. Uh, but of course, not all of these are and I'll be all, not everything works for everyone. I just want to share what works for me. So maybe you could try it and see if it works for you too. See if it works to you for you too. I also just wanted to show some love to people who are mediators in their family. So the first way I take care of myself, I just mentioned it, I go to therapy. I've been in therapy for, I think I've said this before, seven or eight years now, since my early 20s, a blessing. There are some like long months in between because of like insurance things where I didn't have therapy, but I mean, I, what my, I, I'm on my sixth therapist. Um, and all of them just, I, I think about all of them often and just oh so much to them, um, just have given me so many tools, have helped me reflect on so many things, helped me affirm so many experiences and feelings, and I want that for everybody. 
Uh, of course, therapy is expensive and dealing with insurance is a bitch. Um, <laughs> it's really, really, really not ideal uh, the way they have it set up here in the US. Um, so if you don't have access to therapy, I mean long-term friends um, are always a soft place to land. And what, how I've navigated opening up to uh, long, long-term friends, you know, I, you know, I send them a text and say, hey, do you have capacity or is it okay if I, you know, talk about this or something happened uh, over the weekend and, or there was, there's tension in my family right now because of this and I really, I don't know what to do or I could really um, use somebody t uh, to listen and you know you want to do that because it's it's not everybody's ready for that type of conversation uh and not everybody is readily available to have that type of conversation and those type of conversations you know um you you'll get emotional it could be really long and so uh for both parties you want to be uh, fully present for them so honor honoring their time and their capacity and then also also yours because you deserve that full um full presence also and so i have had friends and say oh, just hang on uh, i'm almost I, I i i love you uh and yes of course but i get off work and like at this time and so let me let me tell let me text you then or let me call you then or send me a voice memo and i'll listen to it on the way home or or sometimes my friends and i will send voice memos to each other and say like hey um I'm going to talk about something that happened, uh, but so listen to this when you have the time. I'll really appreciate it. Uh, or I'll you send like a like a pre a text <laughs> like a preface text and say uh, I just need to please read this when you have the time. I just really need to talk to somebody. And my friends and I have sent long text messages. Uh, like I said. In other Fuente Body Breaks, I'm a words of affirmation girly, so long text messages uh, back and forth <laughs> is very common between me and my friends. And then other times I've, you know, said on my close friend's story, like, hey, really need to vent uh, right now, or could really talk to someone, and um, if, if any of you are free, and some friends will be like, yeah, I'm available, or I'm free, what's up, or like, hey sis, what's up? Um, and so I've I've went about it that way, and uh, some or sometimes my friends just send like the hugging emoji, or some friends just say like I love you and I'm thinking of you, and sometimes that's that's what your friends can give you, and that's that also has really really helped me. And sometimes I take screenshots of those short messages that are just really affirming and tell me that people are here for me and things like that, and I go back and read those text messages um, that just show me that I I have people in my life that care about me and see me and value me um, through difficult times when I may not feel like I'm doing anything right, uh, especially being a mediator at 30 years old and have been doing it since I could remember. Um, yeah, you'll have those like, I guess, family imposter syndrome. Like, am I, is what I'm doing enough? Am I caring enough for my family or what? You know, why isn't this working? Um, <laughs> is what I'm doing wrong? You go through everything uh, when, when you know, things aren't okay with, um, with you and the people you love. And some of these feelings just are are passing passing thoughts. Um, I've had a mindfulness and social work professor who used that that language and said like thoughts are just like thoughts are like guests, and you know allow like greet them and allow them to pass through. Uh, and have I had another professor, my practice professor, she said thoughts are thoughts are just thoughts uh but feelings are real so it's important to honor those 
it's important to honor them and so those are some ways that I do honor them I would say having my own space <laughs> do we like the lamp? I feel like the lamp in the back helps. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I've always wanted to move to New York City for my dreams in art uh, and where I saw myself um, using my social work in art. Mostly, I'm, but I mostly dreamt about moving to New York City for, for theater. <laughs> But I mean, it was something that I, you know, did for me and same with graduate school it was something I did for me. Um, so make sure to have those, those whole lists, physical, physically have a space of your own. So if you don't have access to living in your own space, uh, schedule out hours at a time where it is just you physically alone, uh, going for walks. Uh, I would go for swims in 2020 when I had no job and I was living at home and I thought I wouldn't be able to move to New York because campus was closed. Uh, so I would lay in the pool a lot. Um, dance class scheduling out a dance class so even if it's like hours and a time long baths just sitting in the bath uh so even if it's just hours at a time like that i also what has also helped if you know depending on where the tensions are between the family if it's the whole group dynamic or if it's um you know between three people between two people uh individual uh, time with family members have also really really helped so whether that be going to a movie with my brother or to or going to walk on the trail with my mom or my mom staying an extra week after I graduated when my siblings went home already um, or my sibling just moved out here and so um whatever we they went to my once a month choir with me and so i think that one-on-one -on -one time really does help and you know when you're spending time with each other um organically you allow it you there's space to organically check in and be like how are you feeling about x y and z and so um yeah you're able to check in in that way um also being away um sometimes it's only accessible to talk to text uh we're on different time zones uh and i would say texting has um helped be more explicit with needs and feelings um, and also recounting, you know, how um, certain things were said and how certain things are felt in high tension conversations. And so really, I would, and I, did I say this already? I may have said it a million times already. Um, as a person whose love language is words of affirmation, um, I think I've even said to my family, like, you know, I I would prefer to talk through text right now instead of a phone conversation or um, I'm not ready to talk in person, but I wanted to let you know. And then I've also I've since I've moved out here, I've seen um, other family members do it or, you know, if my mom were to ask me, like, how should I approach this? And I advise like sending a text it has it has worked it has worked so i'm not saying like oh texting is the best <laughs> way to go about but establishing the communication medium that works for you and so i think i've even said before to my family is when we're feeling uh really activated maybe it is better to take a step away and send a text to one another that way we can we can really name our feelings and that way the other person or the other or other people 
can read back on what was said and reflect on it. So establishing a media, a, a communication medium that works for you when you need to step away from, uh, from the moment. And those are, those are some things that, that work for me. Uh, if you have any other ways <laughs> that you take care of yourself as a mediator in your family, please let me know in the comments. I would appreciate them and maybe I'll share them in another video uh, and people will see them in the comments. Thank you for listening. That was the first, one of the first videos where I really opened up about like family dynamics, but that's another, when I thought of doing this topic today uh, and I have my like little list, I make a list of like videos I, I want to create someday one day and when i thought about this i oh when i create any video i always ask like is this a video that my younger self would appreciate uh and this is definitely one of them so thank you if you made it this far and thank you for listening and if you are a mediator in your family i see you uh and i hear you and i feel you and i'm with you and i needed to drink water again Okay, today's affirmation is, okay, oh, oh, okay, oh, how perfect, because yesterday, what was I talking about? I was talking about music and how I have vocal coaching. This is a singing affirmation. Uh, and I should definitely practice my song after this. This affirmation says, I strengthen my singing voice every week. Feel the joy in singing when I sing and embrace what... Hiccup. And embrace what makes my singing voice special. <laughs> if you're a singer, you strengthen your singing voice every week. Feel the joy in singing when you sing and embrace what makes your singing voice special special if you're not a singer i manifest and i claim for you i claim for us that you still embrace what makes your voice special no matter what uh because everyone's voice is special um the newest addition you will see in the description below we are faxing our representatives now we are faxing them so you'll see that in the link below in the description below how to fax your representatives and templates for that uh but please continue uh or please start welcome if you've started if you've just started taking action in any of the links below, multiple of the links below to stand in unwavering public solidarity with Palestine. Please, please, please fax your representatives, keep calling your representatives, leave them voicemails, ask for, ask for written responses back, email your representatives. Um, for those in the Bay, please keep protesting APEC, no APEC. Um, Biden is going to be there tomorrow, Tuesday, um, get there, demand the ceasefire, sign petitions, sign, um, more petitions, keep signing petitions. Uh, there are links on where you could donate. There are films you could watch, podcasts you can listen to, artists uh, to support, especially, especially the journalists on the grounds in Palestine, revealing the truth to the world. Please keep uh, following them. Um, keep them in your thoughts. If you pray, keep them in your prayers. Please uh, keep amplifying their voices and showing the world that we are all standing together to put an end to this genocide that is being funded by the United States. And this is so critical because Palestine's freedom means the freedom for all of us. Liberation for one of us is liberation for all of us, for all of us. Even if my voice shakes, I told you. Um, this is 
for free Haiti, free Congo, free Sudan, free Hawaii, free Puerto Rico, free the Philippines. Um, we're coming for everything. And stay, do not, do not get fatigued now. Take a moment if you need to relax and reset, get rest that you need, but stay in it, stay in it, stay focused. The election is coming uh, and we need to act. We need to act, we need to do everything to make sure this never ever ever this all this stops and this never ever ever happens again <sighs> if you made it this far thank you so much um i really appreciate you tuning in and checking in with your bodies uh with me that's what forehead to body is all about i will see you all tomorrow all my love always and always i'm trisha forte and this is forehead to body